Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 1, Lesson 13, called Polyhedra. And so we're investigating some polyhedra today. So what are polyhedra? So first of all, we have some examples of polyhedra right here. We have this shape, like a cube right there. We have this other little shape, not quite a cube, more like a pyramid of some sort there. We have one that's made out of several, looks like pentagon shapes, all grouped together, almost like a ball. Another one grouped together like a, with a bunch of triangles grouped together. This one is just a, very different. Lots of triangles grouped together, almost like a star, but it's just one giant shape. Over here are our counter examples, meaning that they are not examples here. We see we have a sphere. We have a cylinder here. We have this shape that just has a gap in the middle that kind of curves around somehow. And we have a box that seems to be missing the top. All right. So these are all different examples of, as you talked about in class, some polyhedra right here and some that are not polyhedra. Okay, and your teacher probably gave you some more to look at and just kind of sort through and kind of notice the differences. And the idea is to you, for you to kind of say, what do you notice? What do you observe? What's happening here? Um, and what, you know, what are the features of a polyhedra? So really, number two is that, that question. What features help you distinguish polyhedra from other figures? And so we notice that in a polyhedra, they are all made from polygons which we talked about a couple lessons ago, right? We can see all these nice two-dimensional shapes that are closed. We have squares, we have triangles, we have pentagons, we have more triangles, right? They all are made from, from a polygon. Another thing that they all have in common is um, they do not have unattached edges. And by that, I mean everything connects to something else. There's nothing that's kind of loose and hanging out there. So for example, this would be an example of an unattached edge. It doesn't have anything that attaches to it. It's the top of that wall there, the box, but it doesn't attach to anything, right? That's kind of a problem. So these ones all have something they attach to. There's no open gaps there. When we look at kind of the non-polyhedron, um, they tend to be, this one, the non-polyhedra, they seem to have some curved edges, right, or sides. They have some curved edges and sides. They tend to be a little more rounded. And we can see in here on our examples, there are no curved sides, no rounded sides. Over here, lots of curves going on, right? Lots of rounding going on, okay? Um, and let's see. Um, yeah, and then they also seem to have um, a face that is not a polygon. If you can see it, even it has a face. Well, so for example, um, a circle, we have a circle here, that looks okay, but all this curved stuff doesn't quite make a nice uh, curve shape for us here. A sphere has no real face, so they have some issues there. So our polyhedra tend to essentially be made out of polygons. They have all their edges attached and all grouped together nicely. And so we take a look at something like a cube, right? A cube is going to have several distinguishing parts to it. It's going to have its face, which is the flat area. It's going to have its edge, which are going to be kind of the sides, might call them the sides. And it'll also have the vertex, which are the pointy parts, right, where all the edges come together, and it's going to have a vertex there. It's got multiple ones, that's okay as well. All right, let's look at the next page. Here are some examples of polyhedra that are called prisms. Again, we're talking about what they look like, and so we see they all have these nice faces that are polygons there. We can see the vertexes that exist, and we can see they all have edges. And what's interesting about all these, with these prisms, right, is we see that they each have, um, you know, while this has a triangle top, it also has a triangle base as well. So it has two shapes that tend to match and be parallel from each other. And it also has a rectangle. Here we have 
a square, which is a special kind of rectangle. And over here we have another rectangle with triangular bases that are parallel to each other. Okay, looking down below, we have this nice one, two, three, four, five pentagon shape, but these edges, or these faces here, are again rectangles. We have a rectangle there with square base and square top. And here we have rectangles here with an octagon or hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, six, hexagon base and top. So all the prisms tend to all have a rectangle inside of them somewhere from what we can observe looking at these shapes here and they also have a parallel base and top that are parallel to each other could be a triangle could be another shape it's some sort of polygon that is parallel to that some polyhedra are called pyramids now the pyramids all have something in common they all have triangles in them and the triangles are what make the kind of the bulk of the shape right that's the big part of the shape that makes them come up there. The bases don't always have to be pyramids. The bases can be triangles, squares, pentagons, uh, hexagons, that's okay. But the, all their edges connect to some sort of triangle that then end in one single vertex up at the top there. All right, so what do we notice here? What are the characteristics or features of the prisms? So with the prisms, we said that they all have a rectangular faces. Right, um, and they have the same face. Same faces are parallel to each other, and again, that's whether that's to be the pentagon shape, a square shape, hexagon shape. They have a face that's parallel to each other. Okay, and many have at least two faces that are not rectangles. Those tend to be the sides, right? The parts that go around it there. When we look at the pyramids, okay, they all have a triangle for either all or all but one faces. So all have a triangle, oops, triangle for all or all but one face. All right. This has all faces and these have all but one. It's all triangles but one. Okay. And then we said that uh, the one uh, non triangle face may be uh, really any uh, polygon. And the polygon, though, it joins its edges with a triangle. Okay. And the triangles meet in a single vertex. single vertex, a single point right up there. All right, there's some observations we see there about those. So now we turn the page here and we have a question that says, which of the following nets can be folded into pyramid P? In a pyramid P, select all that apply. Okay, so pyramid P was this one right here, our triangular uh, pyramid there, right? Or it's a pyramid, so that's pyramid P. So which one of these can be folded into pyramid P? Now a net is a way of thinking about if I have a net, like if I'm fishing or tossing them out, it covers an area. So the idea is that if I took this, I'd be able to take each of these pieces and fold it in a way where it would cover that pyramid P. All right, so let's take a look at it. What I did real quick is I took uh, what's here and I just made a real quick copy of it. And then I chopped it up nice and small. I said, okay, well, there's number one. And if we take number one, I zoom in here. Whoop. All right, let's see if we can do this here. Get the right space, there we go. So when we take this one, we can take the triangle pieces and we can fold them and fold them and fold them. And if we fold it just right, we end up with a pyramid, don't we? Okay, so I can actually make that into a pyramid by folding it the right way and getting it to make that pyramid shape like so. A little bit funny to do, but it does work out and we can make a pyramid with net number one. It all folds up. This one comes up top, up top, and that one comes around. No problem. 
for net number two, and then number two we have this shape here, and we have it folded down like so. And the idea here is that if I fold the edges up, all three edges up, I can group that together to make a pyramid shape like so. So that would work as well. Okay, and I could drop it like that, and that would work. When I look at net three, net three though, a little different here. When I fold that, I just can't quite get that to close up, can I? I can make it fold a couple times, but I could overlap it, and you might try this with some large ones. I could overlap it like so. So I overlap the sides, looks like a pyramid, but now I have an empty bottom here because I used two sides to cover up that. I can't get that one to get on that side over there. So as a result, this one's not going to work. So it's good if you have some larger samples of those um, to work with. I hope your teacher gave you something there. I just have the small ones here just to show you real quick. Okay. All right. Your teacher will give you and your group a set of polygons and assign a polyhedron from the first page or page two. Decide which polygons are needed to compose your assigned polyhedron and list the polygons and how many of each are needed. And then let's, let's move that. So let's look back at page two and take a look at the different polyhedrons and talk about the shapes that are needed to make those. Okay, so when I look here at this one at A, oh, I can zoom back out. Sorry, I was zoomed in on the last read the last part there. We see for this one I need two triangles for the top and the bottom, and the triangle has three sides: one, two, three. So I'm going to need three rectangles in order to make that triangular prism. For B, these are all squares, aren't they? And it has six sides. So I'm going to need six squares for B. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hard to show that there. For C, we have the bases of the triangles. So I'm going to need two triangles again. And I have three edges and each edge is going to be formed by connecting it with a, tr a rectangle. So I'll need three rectangles. For D, we have the base and the top here, which is a pentagon. So I'm going to have two pentagon shapes. And then I have these squares in this case here. One, two, three, four, five for the five edges. So I'm going to have five squares in that one. For E, I have two squares for the top, right, top and bottom. So I have two squares, and then my edges, or my other faces, sorry, I have four, and I have four rectangles for E. For F, we have the hexagon, and I have two of those, and then I have the long rectangle sides here, the faces, sorry and there are six of those. Okay, so the idea is that these prisms can all be made with a certain combination of polygons, right? When we look at the pyramids, the same thing is true. This one has a total of the base is one triangle and then three triangles on the side. So with, oops, sorry, not three, but with four triangles, I can make that shape there. For Q, we have a base that is a square, so we have one square, and a square has four sides, so I'm going to have four triangles. For R, we have a pentagon on the bottom, so I'm going to have one pentagon shape, which means I need five triangles. And for S, I have one hexagon. Hexagon has six sides, so I'm going to need six triangles like so. So that's how that would work out, depends on what your teacher gave you to do, but that's how that would be arranged. For B, it says arrange the cutouts into a net if taped and folded can be assembled into a polyhedron. Sketch the net and if possible find uh, more than one way. So the idea here is your teacher is going to assign one of these to you and you have to deconstruct it, pull it apart to make it into a net. How could you cover that up? So uh, one we could do here, let's take a look at F, this um, hexagon, uh, hexagonal um, prism, okay? So we know that it has six sides. So what I could do is I could draw a long rectangle here, 
and we could draw side number one, side number two, side number three, side number four, side number five, and side number six. So I know if, if I fold all that over, at least I would have a six-sided um, uh, uh, prism, but I also need to put a top and a bottom on it. And that top and the bottom, I could put one here and draw that shape like this. And I could put the other one here if we chose to. That would be just fine. And now when I rotate around, then I could fold the ends up and I'd have a nice um, hexagonal prism right there. All right, are you ready for more? What's the smallest number of faces a polyhedron can possibly have? Well, we saw that before, it was with pyramid P. It's the one that is shaped like a triangle on the base, and then it has the pyramid with the triangle there has four. So the smallest would be four, that's because the base would be the smallest, the smallest base possible is three, and then to connect that would take three more sides for a total of four. All right, okay. So in the next activity, uh, if you did some class here, your teacher gives you uh, the net of a polyhedron and it wants you to cut out the net and fold it along the edges to assemble a polyhedron and then tape and glue it together. So that's something you can do there in class, hopefully. They gave you one to, to, to uh, cut apart and then tape and glue and see what kind of polyhedron you can make. After you've made that, then decide how many vertices, edges, and faces it has. So to wrap up today, it says a polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure composed of faces. So polyhedron is three-dimensional composed of faces. And each face is a filled-in polygon and meets only one other face along a complete edge. And the ends of the edges meet at points that are called vertices. So we have these nice faces that all connect with edges everywhere. And the edges all meet up at places called a vertex or a vertices. Okay, so vertices is more than one, but it's the same as the word vertex. So vertex is one, vertices means more than one. So if you get stuck with those words, that's what it means. A polyhedron always encloses a three-dimensional region. The plural of polyhedron is polyhedra, right? So polyhedron is one, and polyhedron is two or more okay all right and these are some pictures of some polyhedra which we talked about and then we talked about a prism is a type of polyhedron with two identical faces that are parallel to each other okay those are called bases there anyone can be the base doesn't matter but they are then connected by a set of rectangles all right so this is a triangular prism here a pentagonal prism here a rectangular prism there and then we looked at what we're called pyramids. And saying a pyramid is a special is a polyhedron that has one special face called the base. Because one base, one base, all the other faces are triangles that meet in a single vertex. So a rectangular prism has a square base, hexagonal pyramid has a hexagon base, and so on. But they all only have the one the triangles here that meet in a single vertex right there. The last thing we talked about is this net, which is the two-dimensional representation of the polyhedron. So you make it a flat 2D shape, and then by folding things up, and up, and up, and up, it turns into a model of the polyhedron there. So that's the idea from today's lesson. Let's pause there and give you a few minutes to work on your homework, and we'll come back and check it together. All right, so here's our homework here for lesson 13. Select all the polyhedra, and that's plural for polyhedron. So which ones are going to work? Well, we need to make sure it has polygons that all connect and no loose edges. So A looks great. B, as crazy as that looks, it does look like it all connects together with straight edges. So we're going to say B looks good. C has this curve, right? And what do we say? We can't use the curve, so curve's not gonna work, so no to C. E is also curvy, so no to E. And then D, we have straight edges. We have polygons you recognize, and everything's closed in, so D would work as well. 
We'd say A, B, and D. Number two, is this polyhedron a prism, a pyramid, or neither, and explain how you know. All right, well, let's take a look at this. First of all, a prism needs to have rectangular pieces, and we can see here that it certainly has a rectangular piece, right? We can see a rectangular piece right here, and that rectangular piece goes around and around and around and around and around and around and around to make eight different rectangle pieces there. There are actually eight that are there. To have it be a pyramid, you would need to have a lot of triangles. I don't see any triangles there. So if anything, we would say this is an example of a prism. How many faces, edges, and vertices does it have? Well, let's take a look here. So faces, edges, and vertices. All right. One of the easier ways to count the faces is to say, well, at least I know I have the base here and a base there. So I know I have two to start with, but then I need to add all the rectangles. Well, because it is an eight-sided shape, that means there are going to be eight rectangles for a total of 10 faces. In terms of edges, I know that there's an edge that goes with every one of the places where the octagon connects to a rectangle. That happens eight times in the front and also eight times in the back. But then there's also the places where the rectangles connect themselves. That's going to happen one, two, three, and we can look at it this way. It kind of connects uh, here and here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight connections for the rectangles. So in terms of edges, I have eight plus eight plus eight, which is 24. The vertices are the points that all come together, and we have vertices, we have eight on the front side, and we also have eight on the back side for a total of 16 vertices there. Number three, Tyler says this net cannot be a net for a square prism because not all the faces are squares. Do you agree or disagree with Tyler's statement? Hey, he's saying this can't be a square prism. All right, so square prism is his argument, and he says no, it can't be a square prism, and we have to agree or disagree. All right, now remember, a prism means that it's gonna use rectangles, right? And it's gonna have um, matching bases, okay? So two bases that are the same and that are parallel. Oops, sorry about that. So whatever that base is, is what we use to name it. So if it's gonna be a, let's say it was a triangular prism, then we would expect to see a triangle with a rectangle like so, and a triangle over here, and a triangle like that. We'd expect to see two triangles and three rectangles. If I'm using a square prism, I would expect to see a square and a square, then I'd expect to see those line up like so with rectangles connecting the corners together. So something along those lines. I would end up with two, rec two squares and four rectangles. So Tyler says this is not a square prism, but we can see here that it has a square and a square. Both of those would be fine for a base as this folded over to make the rest of the prism. So we would actually disagree with Tyler because this is exactly what you would use as a net to make a square prism. He's probably thinking of a cube. A cube would need six squares. This is not a cube, this is a square prism. Number four, explain why each of the following triangles has an area of nine square units. All right, so a couple ways of doing this, we could either turn these into, just looking at the area of them, we could say, well, it's one half times a base, one, two, three, four, five, six, times a height, and here's a height of one, two, three, All right? And half of six is three, three times three is nine. We can say that's why, because it's nine. We can also make a copy of it if we wanted to, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we can say, well, in this case here, we have a base of six, and, or sorry, base six, height of three, 
and we cut that in half and so that's why that works out the way it does right this one here same idea we have one two three four five six is our base we'll do one half times a base times a height draw the height right there and that height is a value of one two three and so again that equals nine and the last one here, we have one half times the base, one, two, three, four, five, six, and a height, we draw a line right here. We have a height of one, two, three, same equation, and so we still end up with nine. So, different triangles, but they all have the same area. All right, number five, number five. A parallelogram has a base of 12 and a height of 1.5, what's the area? The area is found by multiplying base times height. So 12 times 1.5, we end up with 10. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Start with a 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. We add those up, and we have that number. We have 1 behind the decimal, so I'll move the decimal there. And we have 18 for number 5a. We say 18 meters squared. For 16, we have a triangle has a base of 16 and a height of an eighth. So triangle is one half times base times height, like so. All right, so let's first of all multiply the fractions together. What is one half times one eighth? That becomes one sixteenth times 16, which we have left there. 16 times one sixteenth is equal to one. So we have one square inch is our answer for number B. A parallelogram has an area of 28 square feet and a height of four. What is the base? So we know base times height equals the area. We have no base given. We have a height of four and the area is 28. So to solve this, I'll divide both sides by four. And our height, or our base, sorry, what's left is gonna be equal to 28 divided by four which will be seven. And finally, a triangle has an area of 32 square millimeters and a base of eight. So one half times the base times the height equals the area which is 32. We wanna find that height there. So half of eight is four. So we have four times h equals 32. And we'll divide both sides by four. And that leaves us with h equals 32 divided by 4 is 8. So there's the answer for those ones there. And finally, number 6, find the area of the shaded region and explain your reasoning. So our last one here for the day. We have a shape, or it's a triangle. So our formula for the triangle is, again, 1 half times the base. Now the base is 6 plus 2 plus 6 times the height, and our height is three plus two. All right, so let's continue that. We have one half times six plus two is eight, plus six is 14, and three plus two is five. Half of 14 is seven, and seven times five is 35. And we would say it's centimeters squared is what we have so far. Now that's the whole triangle though, right? I now need to subtract that little square. That square is a two by two square, and two times two is four. So let's subtract the four square centimeters. The 35 minus four is 31 centimeters squared. So make sure you complete that by subtracting the square to find out what the actual answer is going to be. That's it for today. Have a great one, and we will see you next time.